system. You're live, Deputy Mayor Burton. Okay. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Hello, welcome everybody to our council meeting here on November the 8th, 2021. And uh, we'll start off with the order of proceedings, uh, closed session. There was no closed meeting today, so there's nothing there. Uh, first thing we need to do is approval of the agenda. Recommendation, be it resolved that the Council of Township of Clearview hereby approve the agenda and dated November 8th, 2021 as presented. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Broderick, seconded by Walker. All in, any questions, amendments to the agenda? All in favor? Motion carried. Disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Does anybody have a pecuniary interest? Uh, Councillor Walker. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, as a result of not being at the public uh, session of 5-1 last meeting, I will not be voting on the minutes as everything is incorporated into one package. Great, okay, thank you for that. Are there any other, uh, any other disclosures? If not, if you find yourself in that uh, position, then uh, please let us know as we move on. So the next item is public participation. And uh, before we uh, get into the public participation, I wanna say that we received 23 emails, letters uh, from the public, all in regards to the Collingwood Street Bridge. And um, various members of the community wrote uh, their concerns about the bridge being closed. Um, but I'm, we're not going to discuss that right now because it is an upcoming, uh, on our upcoming agenda uh, further on, there is a, a report from, uh, from staff on, on that. So I think we'll discuss that and I, that will alleviate a lot of the issues that, uh, and concerns that have come up in, in this, in these letters. So that said, I'm going to go on to deputations and presentations, but are they here and available? At this time, uh, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Burton. I just brought in Judith Crawford as a panelist. Judith, you can turn on your, your microphone and your video. There we go. Oh, there we go. There's a, that, that's not Judith I'm looking at, though, Paul. Okay, so uh, I, I, who is the speaker? Who, who is going to be speaking representing your group there? I'm is it Paul Judith? Mayor. I'll be speaking first, and then we'll have a couple other group members speaking afterwards. So they'll right, all be right. Okay, so public participation is typically limited to five minutes. So will you be within that five minutes? We'll be close. Well, we'll do no, you'll that. be close. We, we, okay. were told we, had, we were told we had 15 minutes, so we were oh. well in that. Well, okay, uh, okay, okay. Well, if you got three different speakers, that's five minutes of speakers. So, okay. We'll be, we'll be there. So, okay, so you have the floor, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mary Worship, council members, staff, and visitors. My name is Paul Van Staveren, and I'm speaking as a businessman, a farmer, and as a, a permanent resident of this community. community. I'm also speaking on behalf of a group of people just like myself with the same concerns about the decisions being made about the road speeds in our community. Many have lived here their entire lives and feel a, a select few are making decisions with little input from the affected residents. We are representing taxpayers, residents, employees, and employers who employees who work in, who work, plan, and reside within our community and within our boundaries. This is a precedent setting decision and that we feel is 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 not in your constituents' best interest. Next slide, please. Yeah, it, excuse me, uh, but Paul, can you just hang on for a sec? Is there, uh, I understand there was supposed to be a presentation that was supposed to be- There's slides that were, I'm just saying, if they could turn the next slide. Okay, yeah, but we, we, we are not seeing that at this time, Miss. Uh, okay. I was just going to go to uh, Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, can you, okay. Just bear with us for, for a minute there, Paul, while we get your presentation up. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we're on this slide two now. Okay, yeah. go ahead. What has changed on our roads? The volume on our roads has increased. Clearview has become a commuter, commuter, commuter bedroom community. What new employment have we seen in our in communities in Creemore, Stainer, New Lowell, and Ottawa? 
many residents have decided to settle in Clearview and work from home. How, how many cars are in your driveway today? Number two, GPS. GPS has encouraged travel on roads previously util, utilized by local residents only. Three, people are driving at higher rates of speed reflecting the performance of new vehicles. Next slide, please. Our community has pushed hard to attract new business. Business needs to utilize all available routes to supply cl clients in the community. Many businesses that include lumber yards, electricians, plumbers, repair shops, fuel deliveries, couriers, and farmers can expect to add hours to their daily routine. A reduction in speed on Fairgrounds Road, for an example, can add over five minutes on a round trip. Now, if a business makes just five trips a day, that's in excess of half an hour per day, two and a half hours per week. Is that fair? Are we, are we as we recover from a pandemic, can our small businesses afford this added expense? What effects are we having on our climate? Are we forcing for, to drive further away? The question is why? Next slide, please. Positive decisions have been made in the past by council and as reflected by the redesignation of County Road 42 as a full road road. What a positive effect this had on our local economy. What is, what is driving the decision of council for you to consider the speed limit changes to our roads? Speeds must be qualified quanti qualify and reflect road safety. Our own township engineer, RJ, RJ Burnside report of June 21 recommended to council that the number and types of collisions be reviewed before implementing traffic calming measures. Their initial report recommended no changes. The County of Simcoe stated in March 9th of 2021 Committee of a Whole report, artificially low posted speed limits that, we are, that are not consistent with driver's expectations commonly result in poor driver compliance and tend to result in larger variation in vehicle travel speeds. The larger speed, speed variations often result in more vehicle conflicts and potential collisions that may not have occurred with a higher posted speed than the majority of the drivers would deem as reasonable. Numerous studies have shown that the majority of motorists do not alter their speed to conform to speed limits that they perceive as unreasonable for the prevailing roadway conditions. Speed limits that reflect the behavior of the majority are more likely to be obeyed. This is from our, our county. I also refer to the township's own traffic calming policy. Has section two of your common policy been initiated? As we are trying to, are we trying to divert traffic out of our community? Will, will, are we trying to, will the tourists leaving Collingwood choose to take the faster routes and not the scenic route back to the city, diverting traffic around our small community? An example of that I use is Creamware. We can remember the opposition for those who, when we saw the, the gas station proposal down at Cash Down Corners, the concern of losing traffic to Creamore and the businesses to Creamore. Oh, and they said, oh yeah, we can put signs up. We haven't seen that yet. We have, we have are we ever gonna see support for a, our store in, or a restaurant in New Lowell again? Will reducing speeds increase traffic flow to these areas? Not likely. Next slide, please. Has, count, has council considered accident, accidents caused by, caused by road conditions? animal ear interference, single vehicle accidents? Was, what has caused the accidents? The road, the hills, the sunlight angle, the shoulder width, these haven't changed. Why are you conceding is considering a speed change as a solution? The quality of, mis, of municipal services is currently very good. Will it stay that way? Will snow plows, sanders, and road crews be able to perform their, their services effectively? Will garbage services be able to complete their routes without having to increase costs? We, we saw last week with the new drivage, the garbage pickup, they didn't get everything done. Now, if all of a sudden we turn around and say, oh, now you can't drive 80 and you have to drive 60 to go to the dump, what effect is that gonna have on us? Our volunteer firefighters who live on the affected roads are not allowed to speed when on route to an emergency to, to respond. If you need help, will their ser service be as timely as they are now? Our municipal employees doing inspections on or site visits travel these roads. Are we expecting them not to use our own township roads because it's faster to use county roads? In this time of COVID restrictions, why are we spending money to make questionable changes? With what is the cost? What is the cost of change that we do not know and what the result will bring? Next slide, please. 
If the speed limits are not respected now, we, we cannot expect lower speed limits to be respected either. Our police services do a great job, but, do, but they are taxed to their limit. Three weeks ago Saturday, an accident occurred on the main street of St. Stainer right by the tracks. It took 35 minutes for the police to respond. This may be an isolated situation, but it reflects the workload they are under. Now, we're, we've performed a door-to-door -door in person survey of residents on Fairgrounds Road and the sixth line between County Road 9 and 91. 73% supported no change to the speed limits. Now, we are only starting to talk to homeowners and the other areas of Clearview, but expect the same results. 1,133 signatures have been collected to date saying they do not support the proposed changes. Next slide, please. We as a committee recognize the need for change, but change like this requires input from all sectors of the community. It is a give and take process. We ask that the council defer any decision at this time in order to, in, in order to participate in a public forum to hear the concerns of many. We as a committee are willing to facilitate a meeting or participate in a council sponsored meeting. We would work with council to present all views to the public. After all this is done, a decision should reflect the will of the people and guidance of council. I thank you. Now at this time, I'd like to have a couple members of our committee just give their uh, support as well. Thank you, who, who is speaking next? Hello. So uh, it, uh, I'm Chris Melsat, speaking next. I'll keep it very short and brief. So, uh, yeah, so as I said, my name is Chris Melsat. I'm owner of Yard Boys Limited and also Georgia Sprinklers. Uh, currently have a staff of about 35 people that are constantly, daily running these roads that we're discussing here tonight. Uh, I want to bring to light a couple economic impacts that I feel is going to happen that I'd like to share with you guys. And just to my own, this is, I have one example that I'd like to share. Uh, as I mentioned, my, my guys, we are running these roads constantly uh, up and down, whether it be for our grass crews, our weed and feed crews going out, our irrigation division, our snow plowing. These are roads that we travel on daily. Uh, it's just one simple example. Uh, I pulled up, we have uh, GPSs tracking all our trucks in history. We feel that this will increase by dropping this to 60K. This will add 20 minutes a day to our crews. Uh, now that may not seem like a lot, but on average of $20 an hour, that's $6.66 a day. And I always have three guys in the crew. So it works out to $19.80 a day times five days a week, $99 times four, time, four times for a month, $396 a month is what this is going to cost for one crew. I have 16 crews. Granted, not all 16 are working uh, on those roads every day, but it is fair to say uh, two, three crews. Uh, is that, that I have out there in those specific areas. And the, 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 the uh, restaurants, the, the, the restaurants in Creamore, uh, there's this people from Collingwood, when they know that now it's, it seems like, okay, maybe it's a five minute drive uh, longer from Collingwood to Creamore, but it's the perceived time. If, if you've ever driven from one end of a second beach to the other, it feels like you're taking forever. Uh, and so I feel this is going to affect Creamore uh, small small businesses, restaurants, where people in Collingwood say, I don't want to go, now nah, let's not go to dinner at the Creamore tonight. It's just, it's too long. It takes forever to go down there. And it's that perceived length of time that it takes. When you're driving 60, it feels slow. Uh, so these are just a couple of quick concerns that I have in my mind. Uh, maybe you can expand that across many different businesses uh, that are working in these areas. Uh, and on top of that, we don't feel it's, there's the economic impact, but it's, it's not necessary. I, I don't understand. The roads are not safe, right? Where's the proof of that, I guess, is our question here tonight. Where's the proof that there's many accidents and there's many deaths? I don't. I live in this area. I commute I, every day on that road, and I do not see, oh, another mm -hmm. accident on the fairgrounds road. It's, it's not happening. And so I don't know if there's police reports, something out there that we're missing that we haven't seen. But, uh, that is an issue that we have. Uh, and we also feel it's actually going to cause more danger. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. If I'm driving down the road and somebody's doing 80K, 82, the people that are falling right to the line, I'm not gonna pass them on the fourth line. But if I'm behind somebody that's falling doing exactly 60, it just feels so slow. It's gonna encourage more people to pass maybe when they shouldn't. Uh, and so I feel this is actually gonna have, every action has a reaction. 
I feel this reaction is not going to be good and it's actually going to cause uh, more accidents in, my, in our opinion. Uh, like uh, Paul has mentioned, we have over uh, 1,133 signatures here of people in this area not supporting this. 72% of the people that live on these two roads, the fourth line and sixth line, do not want this. Uh, so we would really appreciate you guys to take this into consideration. These are people that work, live in the area. They don't, they don't come into the area. These are people that live here, run these roads daily. Uh, so we strongly uh, are hoping that you will uh, uh, at least hold a public meeting to get as much input as possible. Uh, and I'm, I'm just implore you to, to do the right thing and, and allow that to happen. And let's take a pause and have a view at everything. Um, so that's uh, it for me in closing. I'm gonna pass it on to uh, Ward to speak next. Good evening, members of council. Staff could you could you state your name, please, just for the record? Uh, yeah, my name is Gord Ziegel. Okay, Gord. Members of council, staff of Clearview Township, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. My name is Gord Ziegel. I'm a lifelong resident of this area. I live on 2122 Side Road and have a custom home building business and cabinet making and manufacturing shop located on County Road 9 between Fairgrounds Road and the Sixth Line. The majority of my work occurs in this area. I'm speaking to you this evening to ask that you not decrease the speeds in Clearview Township and in particular on the Sixth Line or Fairgrounds Road to the extent being proposed. I feel it will have a direct impact on the econom economics of my business operations. I employ 12 people full and part-time, and they all travel these routes daily, sometimes several times a day. Most of them live and work here. Most of my local subtrades live here, as do my suppliers. The result of the decrease in speeds will decrease productivity, and my losses will be measured in hours, not minutes. I have read the RJ Burnside reports and would like to point out three consistent facts contained within it. Slower speeds, such as what is being proposed, may result in more accidents. Two, the number one recommendation to solve any traffic issues that council is discussing is to reconstruct the roads. It's a proven fact that even though traffic calming measures have an effect on lowering the speeds, after enforcement is no longer in place, commuters will return to their original speeds. Why would we spend $50,000 to install lower speed limit signs when ultimately there will be no effect? We continue to go through turbulent times due to COVID-19. Are we going to spend more money on the other 50 roads that were a part of this study? This council should prioritize at this time, the economics of our agricultural base our businesses, and the well-being of our population of full-time residents, both young and old. We should not spend exorbitant amounts of money to promote tourism and leisure time activities on our roads when there are other elements in our township that should be a priority right now. We as a committee are asking you to follow your own procedures as outlined in the traffic calming measure guidelines and engage with those residents that live and own property on the subject roads. In general, given the scope of the study that you undertook, council needs to engage the public at large if council is considering expanding on this issue to include other roads. It's my feeling we as a community need good paying local jobs. That makes us stronger. I do not agree choosing tourism and leisure time activities over that premise is the message we want to send our farming community, local businesses, potential businesses, and commuters. Further, I am an active member of the CFIB. The Canadian Federation of Independent Business has 95,000 members Canada-wide. It's a nonpartisan organization. I've spoken with CFIB. I've sent all the documents that pertain to this issue. 
they will be sending a letter in support of our committee's stance on this issue and the policies and procedures that are in place that support that stance. I will share this with you once I've received. They cannot get it to me before this evening. In closing, I ask that you as our elect elected representatives sit down with us to discuss our concerns before acting upon your proposals. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, uh, are you, Gord, are you the, the last presenter? I have like 30 seconds. Judith's gonna talk. Okay. Thank you. I'll be super, super short. Um, thank you for listening to us. My name is Judith Crawford. Um, I was raised on Fairgrounds Road, learned to drive there. I'm currently live in Claymore, and as personally, I don't support the speed limit change, but as well, working for Steer Enterprises as the controller, from a business perspective, our concerns are the same as everyone else at this table. It doesn't really matter what industry these business people are serving, they're traveling the roads. The concerns are the same. The impact is the same. The impact on the day-to-day -day operations, impact to our employees who are commuting on these roads, and potential impact on us attracting new employees. We bring a, a, a good percentage of our 60 employees are coming from Gray County to attract if we have to go that direction to attract employees, they're going to be discouraged to come through roads that are not 80 kilometers because it's going to add time to their commute time. It's going to be a decision making for them whether they want to take a job in Clearview Township. We want to attract those skilled trades here. Other than that, I think we've said in our round table here this discussion over and over. So that's really all I wanted to add. Um, but we are open for questions back from anybody on council. Oh. Paul wants to do a little summary at the end. Thank you, Judith. Paul Van Starven again. Uh, I just want to thank our council for your time. I remind everybody we are not a special interest group. We are trying to represent all concerned citizens. We want council's decision only after consultation has been completed and reflect the will of the majority. So we are happy to work with you and, we, and we'll open the door now if you have any questions for us. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Paul. Um, is there any members of council that uh, had some questions or comments they wanted to <laughs> add or ask? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. That's it. Thank you for your presentation. We uh, appreciate your comments and uh, we'll take it into, we'll take it into advisement. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. And thank you to your, your team there that uh, put this presentation together. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, that ends our um, deputations and presentations. Next item, item number six, is public meetings, and we have no public meetings on the agenda tonight. So the approval of the minutes for the council meeting. Recommendation, be resolved that the Council of the Township of Clearview hereby approve minutes of the October 25th, 2021 council meeting as presented. Can I have a mover, please? Uh, Lamers and McKechnie, any comments, questions, amendments? Amendments? All in favor? Motion carried, and we noticed that Mr. Walker did not vote in that uh, on that item. Business arising from the minutes, if any? Going once, going twice. Okay, communications from the mayor. Uh, I'll, I'll review the communications from, from the mayor. Uh, closed session report. There's no items because there, there was no closed uh, meetings. Uh, NVCA board highlights. Uh, Councillor Patterson, was there anything you wanted to mention? Councillor Patterson. Yep, just getting unmuted. Um, I just really refer you to the report, and uh, it might be useful reading prior to. Uh, our session with the NBCA coming up when they do come and present their budget. Uh, but the, um, the Bill 229, which is the uh, amendments to the Conservation Act, are, have been enacted and some it's transitioning to the new regulations. Uh, some went into immediately, others, um, there's deadlines. Uh, the transition plan uh, will be complete in December, so we'll have full details. But the main issue there, you recall, is uh, what would be responsible funded by municipal levy, uh, that would be the mandatory programs. And they, they have outlined those. And then there's, um, there's still the matter of the, uh, the non-mandatory programs that are still discretionary 
uh, to uh, municipalities to support, but subject to a, an agreement. So I think you read through that and you, you get a pretty good sense of um, where the, uh, the government has uh, changed the, uh, the Conservation Act and how it might affect uh, our municipalities as well as others. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so the, the 9.3 is Office of the Solicitor General, South Georgian Bay, it's Spring Water Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan. It's a letter from the Solicitor General uh, basically congratulating our mayor and the other mayors of, uh, of Simcoe County, that would be Springwater and Wasega Beach and Collingwood, that all got together to put together a community safety and well-being plan. Uh, the next item is 9.4, is the Clearview Public Library, Simcoe County Library System Service Delivery Review, which was done by the uh, System Deliver Delivery Review Committee at County. And uh, our CAO is here to answer any questions and uh, you've all read the copy of the letter that was sent to uh, that was sent there. Did you want to comment on this? I believe our CAO for the library is with us. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Here I am. Yeah. Did you want to make a quick comment about this, sir? Yes. Uh, so when they were doing the study, they contacted all the CAOs, all the boards, and all the CEOs of the libraries, all the CAOs of the township too, and the mayor in every municipality to talk about this. And I can tell you that the response from all of those groups across Simcoe County was that they were in favor of maintaining the status quo. Yet the status quo was not an option in the report, which there are a lot of irregularities in the report, but I think the biggest concern that uh, board chairs and boards and CEOs are voicing is why would you not include that? In the last two uh, county library service reviews, the status quo has been an option. And this time it wasn't even put in as something to look at. It, it just, um, this is the kind of report that you might feel inclined to poke with a stick, but you wouldn't want to run, run it up a pole. Okay, hey, thank, you for, thank you for your comments. Uh... So it's uh, the recommendation is uh, be resolved that the township uh, that the township of Clearview hereby receive communications from the mayor for information. And I have a mover. Oh, Councillor McKechnie, sorry. Uh, go ahead, Councillor McKechnie. That's all right. Uh, do I call you your worship or still deputy mayor here? Yeah, well, your worship. Uh, I, even as deputy mayor, I'm often referred to as your worship. Okay. Either uh, or, whatever yeah. suits you. Yeah. Thank you, your worship. So um, I'm just uh, a question for Jennifer there. Um, are you still there, Jennifer? I was uh, just looking here, and I think uh, I was. Uh, you were talking about possibly losing what is it, service points or something, a reduction in service points. So are you saying that there's a possibility then that we could maybe lose one of our three, one or more of our three libraries? Uh, I think definitely, okay. and. Uh, to move up to a, a county system to make it financially viable, there are so many branches of libraries across this county, there is no way you could continue to have them all remain open. We are the largest, geographically speaking, uh, municipality that has a multi-branch library system in the county. And if they were to reduce one, they're obviously, they wouldn't close Steiner because we just built it, right? right? But if they closed one of the others, how are people supposed to get to one of the other libraries? We don't have transit that goes throughout the municipality. So what you're saying, in essence, if you were to support their concept of going to a countywide uh, system is, you know, we would actually reduce our service to our, our users. And the other thing is, uh, they talk about Barry and Colling and not Collingwood, Aurelia in this report, but they're not part of the county. That would have to be a separate agreement. And I've spoken to the CEO of Aurelia and she said, although Aurelia Public Library was talked about by the consultants, she was never contacted by them. And to her knowledge, neither was her predecessor. So th that to me says that there was some work that was not done that should have been done. Okay, hey. thank you, thanks. Is that it, Councillor McKechnie? Good luck, good, good luck. Yeah. So that's that's that. You're you're done, Mr. McKechnie. 
Yes, uh, your worship, I am. Hey, thank, thank you. So it's um, so back to the recommendation. Uh, uh, <clears throat> be resolved that the Council of Township hereby receive communication from the mayor for information. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Uh, mover is Councillor Deneen, seconder is Councillor McKechnie. Any further comments or questions? I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor? Motion carried. Thank you. County reports. I'll be brief. County reports, uh, since I'm the one here representing county, it's uh, the County of Simcoe Statement Card Exchange Program. So a lot of the residents will be happy to know that County at its uh, workshop and last meeting we had uh, uh, earlier, uh, about two weeks ago, made the decision to approve and allow card exchanges. Uh, there was a lot of concern about the size of the the size of the carts, and they were too big, and et cetera. So uh, county did agree. County council supported a motion to uh, allow carts to be exchanged. That this will be done. Again, in January, they'll start taking the information in January and hopefully be able to do start doing the exchanges in February. Um, this could take some time. And now this doesn't mean all residents are going to be exchanging cards. It's just probably a few that will be exchanging cards. And uh, that's, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But county decided to make this decision prior to waiting to waiting to the test site that was being done in, in new tech. They figured, uh, thought that was, you know, better to go to move ahead sooner rather than later. And Simcoe County Museum honors uh, Remembrance Month at, at the museum, which and they always do an excellent job. Uh, be resolved that the Council of the Township of Clearview hereby receive county reports for information. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Lamers and Councillor Deneen, are there any questions? Going once, going twice, all in favor. Motion carried, thank you. Okay, department, uh, department reports, community services, CS 048-2021, proposed zanning bylaw amendment to regulate cannabis cultivation and cannabis production facilities. Uh, be it resolved, that the Council of Township hereby receive report CS 048-2021 dated November 8th, 2021, and that the proposed draft bylaw amendment to the Township Zoning Bylaw regarding, regarding cannabis cultivation and production facilities as outlined in this report be presented to Council for final approval at the November 22nd, 2021 meeting. Well, well, well done. Oh, hang, hang on, uh, Madam Clerk. Yes. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Burton. You just missed ward reports. Oh, I did miss ward reports. <laughs> <laughs> and all, just checking and that all out. the flag rating. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I, and, and thank you for that. Um, and, and I got a check mark beside it. How did that happen? It was because it was right, right by the county reports. Okay, I'm going to start with Councillor Broderick. With the word reports. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Friday, November the 5th, I uh, partook in the uh, Fire Master Plan uh, Council focus session. And that is it. Thank you. Councillor Lamers. Thank you, Worship. Uh, yeah, I had a discussion about the fire master plan and then uh, evening hall is opened up and we have three concerts going between now, November and December. So we've opened the hall and we've already got three bookings ready to go. Thank That's you. it. Councillor Walker. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, just uh, participated on the 26th with the fire master plan. And the other thing I'd like to say is I'd just like to thank the uh, Standard Heritage Society for the uh, other uh, Remembrance Day banners of personnel that uh, fought in the wars. Uh, they're all up on the, up on the lights. Uh, so I just wanna thank them for keeping that program going 
Um, it's, it's great to see and uh, certainly is nice to be able to walk down and look at those uh, people that uh, allowed us to have what we have today. Thank, thank you, Councillor Walker. Councillor Batterson, you're up. Thank you. Just, uh, I just want to comment. I did watch the uh, county meeting where you had the uh, reconsideration of the sizes, and uh, there was a. It was actually quite, quite uh, well done. I, I, I thought the it was a huge number of uh, uh, provisions to go through. It was a long day. I thought the warden did a fabulous job uh, keeping it on a, a even and um, really positive tone and uh, appreciate the outcome. And I know I got a lot of comments back from the public that I thought maybe I might get comments saying that, well, it's too late, um, I still got stuck with it, but they all were really thankful to the county. So through, through you, Deputy Mayor, uh, certainly you can pass on the comments from Ward 5. They really appreciated it. Um, I will say that I had the opportunity on, um, on the first delivery day, um, collection day on Wednesday to be on Mill Street and uh, I caught the, um, the operator of the truck as he had just finished Mill Street, Joe, the operator. Uh, he just commented on a few things. Uh, there's still going to be some problems where the carts go, but generally he was able to move around them. He had them, he couldn't get the boom arms under, under the tree and lift them up over. So I mentioned to BIA and they're, you know, I'm sure they will have to work some things out. I have had a letter into um, the county with some suggestions that the BIA wants to work through, and, and, and including some kind of a subsidy uh, if they went to a private collection. That's not something the BIA, uh, just wanna say for uh, John Broderick's uh, point of view, because he's the rep on there. I'm not suggesting that's what they're asking for. It's just ideas I've been talking to their president, uh, Laurie Severn about, and it would be nice to get a comment back from the county uh, department saying, uh, would we qualify if we chose for the for the subsidy if we chose a, a, a private um, solution bins um, so uh, look forward to that but generally they were happy with it, what happened um, the operator did say one thing though uh, he said that looking forward and there was a little bit of snow on the ground that day but it wasn't anything significant he is really concerned about how he's going to do the pickup once we have the uh, the windrows thrown up uh, the snow on the sidewalk I know I've talked to Dan about it. Uh, I know he's working on it, uh, but I think we need to really concentrate now. We're close to having a snow condition there. Uh, he was worried for, about the cars being there, uh, about um, the street cleaning going on at the same time. And, uh, and, and, and especially he doesn't think he'll be able to handle very efficiently uh, picking up of those carts if they're on the street side of the windrows. Uh, so... so so we need a solution. So uh, that's it. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, Councillor McKechnie, you're up. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And uh, yes, like the rest, uh, I was uh, took part in the fire master plan uh, survey or briefing. Uh, on Thursday, I'll be attending the uh, Singhampton Cenotaph to uh, lay the township wreath. wreath. And I uh, also want to say, uh, as counselors, we take a lot of flack from people on Facebook. We all know who they are. They're the same people, it seems. But uh, even though in these ward reports, we might only mention one or two things that we've done. There's not a single day goes by pretty much. And that includes the weekend. So we're not working, doing something for council. And I'm not unique in that. I think all, all of council are. So uh, for those of you on Facebook that, uh, that think that we're not doing our job, in Councillor Walker's terms, you need to back off. So I just wanted to get that out there and uh, uh, let everyone know that we're working our hardest to uh, make this community better. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Jeanine. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I just uh, wanted to mention that uh, Station 6 had their second annual pumpkin smash on Saturday. I'm sorry I didn't manage to make it there. Um, I, uh, I haven't even heard or seen any pictures. So I'll just put that out to Rory and maybe he can get somebody to post a few for us. Um, I mentioned, I wanted to mention, I took my recycling out. Anybody that knows my laneway would know that that's not just a small laneway either. Yes, it's a monster. Yes, it's overkill. 
but it went out pretty smoothly. I don't know what it's going to be like in the winter time, but I'll have to make sure my husband makes the <laughs> makes the the driveway clear for, with the plowing. Um, and like uh, Councillor McKechnie, I'm honored to represent Clearview Township at the Collingwood Cenotaph on Thursday. And yes, I attended the fire master plan as well. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, I guess I'm last on the list and I will just do a, a simple report that yes, we had a very long meeting at County Council last Tuesday and it went on from nine in the morning to 5.30 in the afternoon. So it was an extremely long meeting. After our uh, five and a half hour meeting that we had at, at, at Council the, the night before. So it was a couple of grueling days of meetings. Anyways, it was uh, positive and successful and I'll leave it at that. So um, I will now go on to the community services reports. And uh, thank you, uh, Madam Clerk, for uh, guiding me there. Um, I'll read this again. CS-048-2021 proposed zoning bylaw amendment to regulate cannabis cultivation and cannabis production facility. Be resolved that the Council of Township of Clearview hereby Receive report CS-048-2021 dated November 8th, 2021, and that the proposed draft bylaw amendment to the township zoning bylaw regarding cannabis cultivation and production facilities as outlined in this report be presented to council for final approval at the November 22nd, 21 meeting. Can I have a mover and a second or Councillor Broadwick? and a seconder, Councillor McKechnie. Any comments or questions on this? But first of all, I, would, I will call on uh, uh, Mayor Burton, our director, to give us uh, a, quick, a quick brief of the report. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Burton, and uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so I'm gonna run you through a fairly brief presentation, hopefully, on where we are today from this year-long uh, study of cannabis cultivation and production facilities. So I'm going to share my screen to make that happen. So hopefully everybody can see my screen. Okay. So just to give you some quick background, we started this on October 5th when council passed the interim control bylaw. And then we undertook our review. Uh, we looked at what other municipalities were doing. Um, and then on June 14th, we actually, uh, council directed us to have a public meeting, which we did. And then on September 26th, as I wasn't quite ready to report back to you yet, we extended the interim control bylaw. So now I'm reporting back to you and I have a draft bylaw. Well, there are a couple of little adjustments to it, which I will take you through. So firstly, obviously the challenge here is always in finding the balance between um, allowing um, cannabis in the agricultural and rural area as a crop, um, but recognizing that it is somewhat different than a typical agricultural crop because it is a controlled substance. And, um, and then also uh, recognizing that we have a couple of production uh, facilities that are, one is quite substantial in our uh, agricultural area and how to treat them effectively. So firstly, the definition of cannabis that has not changed uh, is what was proposed in the public meeting. I'm not going to go through all of reading it because just for the sake of time, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, we have created two definitions, cannabis cultivation, which is the pure growing of it, and the cannabis production facility, whereby it would be actually uh, made into other uh, like pharmaceuticals or rendered for uh, recreational purposes. We've also created definition for greenhouse and hoop house. This council was concerned about cultivation in a uh, hoop house and also in greenhouses. And greenhouses was something that's also in our official plan <clears throat> about when we can allow that sort of thing, particularly when you get into the large greenhouse greenhouses. Um, we've also, now this one, we did revise the sensitive land uses because there was some comment that we should uh, consider including cemetery. So we have included that. I just wanna note that it 
somehow didn't find its way into the actual bylaw. So we have now added it to the bylaw because that was in the report that the intent was to put that in. And also um, we, uh, what I did was I made a comparison between sensitive uses and the uses that we have in our zoning bylaw to make sure that they were consistent. Um, and also just as note, the reason that bed and breakfast and home occupations are not included is because those are actually accessory uses to a dwelling and a dwelling is considered a sensitive use. So it was already covered in that regard. So in our agricultural and rural zones, the proposal is looking at differentiating cannabis cultivation from a produce farm. This was something that we talked with our lawyer about to make sure that we were trying to cover all the bases. Um, so a produce farm would not allow cannabis cultivation. Um, we looked at the minimum lot area for just cultivation and we're still recommending 10 hectares. Now, again, if anyone wanted to go less than that, they would have to apply for a zoning amendment to the township. Uh, and then at that point, the municipality could consider what studies we might need to consider a reduced area. Um, the minimum lot frontage we thought was reasonable at 100 meters because there are separation distances between the actual cultivation and sensitive uses that would be uh, more substantial than this. And this really isn't a good measurement for uh, whether a property can or can't support a cannabis cultivator when you've got these setbacks in place. Um, the maximum cultivation size, having visited uh, a um, sort of a microgrow, <clears throat> we looked at uh, potentially four microgrows. I think that may be the maximum that you can get from Health Canada. They haven't actually set a maximum. So I'm suggesting a maximum of 800 square meters, which would be four of the micro grows. But this would also apply to someone who was growing under their prescription for a medical license or someone who was growing for them. So it's, um, it would be both situations. The uh, cultivation must be, in, uh, must be outdoors. And the reason for that is um, multi. One is that um, it allows us from a, from a um, enforcement point of view to see what's going on. Whereas if someone say converted a chicken barn or some other indoor facility, it could easily go over the 800 square meters and we wouldn't be the wiser of it. Um, another thing is that um, uh, there's a concern that the odor could actually accumulate inside a facility. And then once they open the greenhouse doors, then there would be a concentrated um, escape of, of odors. The maximum associated uh, building size is 200 square meters. That was a part of the public meeting just to allow some uh, storage of equipment and that sort of thing. And then one of the other concerns that was raised at the public meeting is the size of fences for uh, these sorts of things. And so we felt that 2.4 meters, which I think is the, uh, the height that's required by Health Canada for a micro cultivation is enough. We don't need to go any higher than that. And it's actually pretty low. I think that's around eight feet. I should have actually put that in there. The other thing that we propose is that the cultivation, the fencing, the buildings, the parking, the loading areas be 30 meters to the property line. That way, if somebody were to want to trespass onto the property, they wouldn't necessarily be coming in from a neighboring property and we didn't want to see that happen. So there is a bit of a buffer there. Uh, and then for outdoor cultivation, buildings, fencing, parking, and loading, they have to be set back 300 meters from a dwelling. Uh, and to the lot line of any other sensitive uses. So this would be on an adjacent property. So that would be a separation distance. And just to one of the questions that came up in regard to uh, if, um, if someone on that neighboring lot wanted to then build a house, would they have to be set back 300 meters? No, they wouldn't. Uh, that neighboring lot could build their house wherever they chose to build it as long as it met the the requirements for the setbacks for the dwelling in an ag and rural. What that would then do though, is it would put the cannabis operation into a legal non-conforming or a grandfathered situation. And through site planning, we would know what that setback was. So the resident would be knowingly setting their house in the location that was closer to a cannabis cultivator, uh, but the cannabis cultivator wouldn't then be able to expand any closer to the house. So that's how that would work. 
Um, a dwelling on the property, it was raised at the public meeting that it shouldn't be too far back for a micro cultivator that is growing and operating their own cultivation because it's just too much to be running the hydro and security and that sort of thing uh, quite a distance away. So I have reduced that to 30 meters. However, if the dwelling is not occupied by the owner in order to protect the tenant, I'm looking at keeping 150 meter setback there to the dwelling. Um, this isn't something that necessarily needs to be patrolled or enforced by neighbors or that sort of thing or notify the township. Um, it's really up to the tenant that lives there if they have a concern with uh, the fact that now there is a cultivation happening in close proximity to them. So it's really about protecting the tenant. Uh, no part of any cannabis production or growing, of course, other than the four plants per household, which is allowed, can take place in a dwelling. I think that was also something that got missed either in my report or my bylaw, but I went in and fixed that just to make sure that it was there because I think I was missing the word no. And I have to thank Councillor McKechnie for pointing out a couple of items like that for me to make sure that it was really good and clear. Obviously, that's an important one. Um, and then another item is that any cannabis cultivation be separated a thousand meters to any settlement area. So this was uh, an item that was raised by one of our planners. And I thought it was a good point because as settlement areas grow, it's going to be pushing residences closer to, uh, to uh, locations. And we want to make sure we protect for the expansion of our settlements. So also um, the draft bylaw, if it's approved, any uses that would vary from these provisions, they would require a zoning amendment. I did talk about that earlier. Um, and of course this bylaw can't consider every single situation. Uh, we can't study every single property under an, uh, any kind of nuisance like odor. Um, so if someone is looking to do something different then they would have to apply for a zoning amendment and provide the sufficient studies to justify their application. So now we can sort of turn our mind to the site specific uh, agricultural, industrial, agricultural related industrial zones, of which there are two in the township. We have Peace Naturals and AgriFarm. Peace is located at 4491 Concession 12. AgriFarm is located at 6954 County Road 9. Um, if the draft bylaw is approved, any new uses of this type would require a zoning amendment and would have to meet the requirements of the Planning Act and the uh, provincial policies, the county and the township official plan and any supporting documents, documentation so we could look at that application based on its own merit. So for the uh, for all of the ag rural and the um, ag related site specific zones. Outside storage of waste soils, plant materials, organics, or fertilizers is prohibited other than the composting. And this was raised by uh, one, of the, um, one of the cultivators and uh, processors that there are certain things that they are allowed to uh, compost under Health Canada. So we have revised that to include these certain things. And I did actually witness the composting and there's no odor coming from a comp the compost that I went to view. Um, also, I did go in September. So all the plants were flowering. So I had a, a pretty good idea of, of the odor and it was, it was actually not, there was no odor coming from the compost. It was quite very light from the, um, from the cannabis facility. As far as lighting, one of the comments received at the public meeting was to just clarify in the bylaw that the lighting that we were talking about was really lighting coming from inside buildings and that if the, if the light inside a building was not visible from outside the building, that yes, you could indeed light inside the building and that um, also any security lighting would have to be shielded so as not to be any kind of nuisance to any of the neighbors. And also that cannabis cultivation or production is going to be subject to site plan control. So that includes the micro growers as well. So for setbacks for the AGI site specific zone, we're looking at a 500 meter setback to sensitive uses for the ag related zone. And then the, for the two facilities we have, there are site specific setbacks that are proposed. And then we also have a separation distance proposed between each ag-related um, ag industrial cannabis production facility or 
or ag-related industrial cannabis cultivation. And that would be a thousand meters from one another. And again, you can see here the thousand meters from a uh, settlement area as well. So uh, a, no part of any cannabis cultivation or production facility can be located within a dwelling unit. So that would apply also to the AGI uh, zones and all drying, processing and packaging has to be done within a fully enclosed building and can't take place in a greenhouse or a hoop house. So moving now to our two site specific zones, Peace Naturals, what we've done is looked at their existing setbacks, uh, kind of lined it up with their buffer area and um, allowed some, some minor expansion to the site as well, but to the back. So for all uses, a setback to all uses, I'm looking at 22 meters from the north lot line, and that would be for the office. So I distinguished in Peace's case from the office to the production facilities because the office was located very close to the road, uh, being only 22 meters. 40 meters to the north lot line for storage buildings and 100 meters to the north lot line for the cultivation and processing. 21 meters from the north interior side lot line, and I'll show you that. This is a little piece that juts into on the on sort of the northeast corner of the site. 72 meters from the east lot line and 185 meters from the south lot line. And finally, 130 meters from the west lot line. So that's for all uses. And then, um, so that includes sensitive uses, that's all uses. The zoning will allow some expansion for the office storage and for cultivation and processing using the current setbacks. And of course that would require a revision to their site plan and any studies the municipality may require with respect to things like odor lighting um, and uh, possibly berming uh, as we have done in the past for Peace Naturals. For AgriFarm, we differentiated between the sensitive uses and all uses because there's a, a property that has a dwelling on it that juts into their, into the AgriFarm property and also because Huron Tractor juts into the AgriFarm. So to, do, to deal with that, uh, we're proposing 150 meters for sensitive uses, 150 meters to the north lot line, 50 meters to the east lot line, 90 meters to the south lot line, 120 meters to the west lot lines, because there's multiple lot lines on the west, and to all other uses, 150 meters from the north lot line, 50 meters from the east lot line, 90 meters from the south lot line, and 88 meters from the west uh, lot lines. This zoning too will allow for some expansion and both are subject to site plan control. So this is what it looks like for Peace Naturals. So this would be for the production and the uh, cultivation. They would need to be in this area here. The office is up here. So they would be able to do some expansion to the office here because that setback is 22 meters. This is that little funky um, Northeast uh, lot line that we had to give a site specific to because um, there's storage in this location, this location. And then for AgriFarm, uh, that you can see there's a house quite a distance over here. So it's, it, I think it's about 490 meters away. So it's quite a far, quite far away. Um, with AgriFarm, what we did was we looked at the site plan that they have. They do have a section on their site plan that allows hoop houses and they do have a section on their site plan that allows um, outdoor cultivation. So we recognize that. Uh, and then there, this is the sensitive land use here, the house. And then this is uh, here on tractor. So we had to give different setbacks here so that this still allows for some expansion. Um, and I'm going to get into that briefly, but we're almost there. Um, so for Peace Naturals, their current lot coverage is 8.9%. <clears throat> we're proposed to go to 10%. This would allow up to four. 4,200 square meters for future expansion. The lot coverage for processing, research, analytical testing, and sales is proposed at 1%, which is uh, 3,820 square meters of gross floor area. For AgriFarm, the current lot coverage is 4.12%. It's proposed at 5%. We are proposing 5%. That would allow 3,036 square meters for future expansion. Lot coverage for processing, research, analytical testing, and sales is also proposed at 1%, um, being 3,450 square meters of gross floor area. So there's room for expansion there also. And uh, just want to make sure that I covered everything that Councillor McKechnie talked about. Um, and I guess I could probably stop sharing for the moment. Um, oh, actually, I, I was going to share, if you could just 
bear with me one minute just to go to some of the other things that came up. All right. So these were the items in the bylaw that changed since it went on the agenda. And these are just this morning's adjustments. Um, they really aren't consequential. It's just clarification. So that cannabis is, when we said that it's not to be cultivated in a greenhouse or hoop house, the intent there was not to be cultivated um, indoors. This is for the AG and the rural zones. And um, so we just added in, <laughs> that it not be cultivated indoors, including a greenhouse or a hoop house so that somebody didn't use their drive shed or chicken barn or something like that. So I appreciate that clarification. Um, also for maximum cultivation size, we wanted to make sure that it was the 800 square meters on a lot. So that you couldn't do 800 square meters and another 800 square meters and another 800 square meters on the lot. That might've actually been what the health, um, Health Canada intended on doing and didn't, and we almost made the same mistake. So I'm glad we caught that. Um, and we just go a little further down the bylaw here. And there you can see that we have added cemeteries in. So I think I have addressed all the concerns so far. So at this point, I will stop sharing. And the plan at this point is if there's anything that council sees that they feel there's a need to change, then you know, you're certainly welcome to let me know at this time. And then uh, potentially what I could do is bring back the bylaw with a report to council at the November 22nd meeting. So you have it one more time kind of with feeling, and then we could bring it to the December meeting for final passing if council is satisfied with that. So if there's any questions about that, I'm happy to help. Uh, <clears throat> Councillor McKechnie. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, and Mayor, thanks very much for being very patient with me on this. Uh, uh, I'm, I really do appreciate your hard work. Mayor, can you go back to uh, that uh, previous uh, slide, please? I'd just like to look at the bylaw there, 236-1, or 236.1.3. I just, uh, you were a little bit quick with it on the uh, screen there, and I just want to have a quick look at it here. Sure. Okay, so 236 point. Yeah, 1.3. Yeah. Right here. There we go. Okay, just bear with me. Let me get my other glasses on here. Uh, okay. Um, I, I did it in track changes. That's why it's probably difficult to read. Um, I can, if you like, I can actually just accept the, oh, maybe I can't. Oh, maybe I can. No, it, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. All I want to do, this is, the, this is the anal coming out of me here. You know, the, the anal bit about the wording. So uh, on that, uh, Mara, can you uh, just uh, put in, it says cannabis cultivation shall be limited to a maximum of no more. You, you left out the word then. Oh. Uh, no event. Yeah. Okay. So, so then, yeah. And also, and then you go down a little bit further and it said, uh, and shall, and there should be the word be in there between shall and be. Or shall and be. Okay. That, that's good. That's all I wanted to say. And Much I know better. It, it really doesn't make any difference in the grand scheme of things. I'm just thinking some hotshot lawyer would notice that. And, uh, you know, I'd hate to find ourselves down the road uh, with a different interpretation. That was all. So thank you very wow. much. You're very welcome. And hopefully I would have caught that when I did the track, when I accepted the track changes and read it over. So, but much appreciated. And thank you okay. for all your hard work too. I appreciate it. Thank you. Are, are there any other questions from council? Uh, Tom Patterson. Thank you, uh, Barry Burton. <laughs> um, just this thing, um, I thought I understood it. And, and um, this is with regards to the 200 square meter lots. Uh, I always thought the, the license um, was for uh, a 200 square foot compound with a fence around it and then the, uh, let's say a hoop house inside. The ones I visited on County Road 9, uh, the hoop house was smaller than 200 <laughs> square feet because there was a work area in, within the compound, the fence, between the fence and the hoop house. Now, uh, is it possible now that under this bylaw, we can consolidate four licenses into 
approximating 800 square feet, or do we have to have four, four separate compounds with, at 200 square feet with a yes. house within it? Okay, through, through the Deputy Mayor Burton to Councillor Patterson. The, the regulations from Health Canada is that each micro grow is no more than 200 square meters. So if they had 800 square meters, it would require four licenses for them to do that right. on property. Now, if they have a prescription, so forget the micro grow for a minute and move now to prescription to grow, um, it really depends on what the prescription gives them. It could be more or it could be less, but we're treating them the same for the purposes of uh, cultivation so that it be no more than 800 square meters. So if they've got a four micros, then I presume that each one of those micros under Health Canada's regulations, not our regulations, but under Health Canada regulations, that each of those 200 square meters is separately fenced. And what size? Other, yeah, so the total would be the 800. And then the... Um, if it was a prescription that allowed them to grow that much, then it presumably could be all fenced under one right. pod, so to speak. So I've seen, well, and, and I wasn't sure because the ones I've seen so far, they look uh, complying to what we generally wanted uh, was uh, I'll say one hoop house, you know, 200, as it was described to me as 200 square meters fence area and then the, because when I said to him, is, is this the largest size hoop house you can have? He said, well, I'm somewhat limited to the fact that my compound has to be 200 square feet. And then I need space within the compound to work. So my hoop house is smaller than 200 square feet. So we don't allow hoop houses under this? Under well, this. okay, uh, greenhouses then. Well, we don't allow growing indoors in a greenhouse or a hoop house in the AG of the rural zone under this proposal. So if somebody, if somebody has that legally right now, that's fine, but they can't put any, any more without right. doing a zoning amendment through the municipality. All right. And if he does? Then, then it's a bylaw enforcement matter. No, no, no. If he does apply and gets it for some reason. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, then um, again, is it, is it, 200 square meters per license fence, or can we get four licenses and expand to 800 square feet for growing? They, under this proposal, they could have four licenses with a total of 800 square meters and no more than that. What he's asking is would each 200 meter section inside that have to be fenced separate? Not under our regulations, okay. but if Health Canada okay. requires it, then they would have to. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? Council? No? Okay. Going once out, Councillor Lamers. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, this thousand meter separation from a settlement area, what's stopping a settlement area from moving over into that thousand meter area. Through Deputy Mayor Burton to Councillor Lamers. Well, it is a protection so that we could then eventually move a settlement closer. And then what that would do is it would put that those, any of those cannabis cultivators or um, ag related zones that would now be within the, the thousand meters would be legal non-conforming to that provision. So that would basically mean that if they if they had room to expand, so let's say there was a micro cultivator and they had 400 square meters and they could go to 800 square meters, they wouldn't be able to go to 800 square meters at, at that point. They would have to apply for a site specific amendment to allow for that, in which case then they may have to provide information like an odor study or something like that to determine whether the township would be willing to allow that expansion. Okay, so putting putting a settlement area closer to them is potentially shrinking the size of their expansion if they wanted to later on. That's correct. Yeah. Um, 
you know, for a micro, we would have to consider whether that's something that we're, we want. Uh, and, and really, it, I think at that time, we would have to look at, well, how many do we have? What have we learned since we passed this bylaw? You know, we're still, we're still learning about all of this. The University of Guelph is doing a best practices study, which is still got a year and a half to go. Um, and so as we learn more about this sort of thing, uh, and maybe partly through site specific amendments, we'll find, you know, we'll find out what works and what doesn't work. Um, but that is the answer is that we want to protect for our future growth so that we don't bump up a settlement area boundary right up to, against a, a cultivator. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions from council members? Going once, going twice. Okay, uh, the, the motion has been read, has been moved and seconded. Uh, I'm gonna call for the vote, all in favor. Motion carried, thank you. Thank you, council. Thank, th thank you, uh, Director Burton, that was wonderful and uh, good work, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Okay, so next item on the agenda is CS 056-2021 Building Department Activities Report for July to September. Be it resolved that the Council of Township of Clearview hereby receives the report CS-056-2021 Building Department Activities Report from July to September 2021 for information. And I see uh, our Chief Building Inspector Scott McLeod is with us. Is there any questions, uh, Council, to uh, Mr. McLeod? No question. Did you want to make a comment, Scott? Uh, yes, uh, I just uh, wanted to uh, highlight a few things out of the report. Uh, uh, it does illustrate that uh, we continue to have very strong building permit activity um, and will continue to uh, here in Clearview. Um, <clears throat> and that's uh, our permit numbers are up uh, in terms of number of permits by 25%. But when you look at the construction value and you look at uh, the revenue, uh, it's reflective of the quality, again, of the permits that we're getting. Not a lot of new units uh, certainly being realized. Um, in terms of uh, the building department status, in terms of COVID-19, we continue to follow our, um, our strict protocols with regards to inspections and, and you know, workplace um, standards. Um, but we are fully working from within the administration building, which is uh, since August, which has been um, a huge advantage uh, for the department given the, the amount of activity uh, we're seeing. Uh, the other project which has been ongoing for some time, which is our uh, City View software project, um, we are we do have a go live date for that and that is set for January uh, the 17th. We had anticipated that earlier this fall, um, but due to some setbacks, not from our end, but more so from the um, uh, uh, software provider, um, change in personnel, that sort of thing. Um, it did get delayed, uh, but that has afforded us more time to um, test and review the, the software in advance. So that's been an advantage, but uh, we are excited about going live in, in January. Um, I also wanted to highlight that uh, we do have uh, retirement in the, the building department occurring this month, uh, Ron Pittentree, that has been with the building department uh, for over 14 years. Um, we'll be retiring uh, on November the 26th. And so we are all very excited for uh, Ron and his uh, adventures in retirement. Um, but with that, uh, with Ron's retirement, of course, we are currently advertising for um, uh, a new position or for a uh, plans review, Our actually our plans review, um, Miranda, uh, in our department has uh, moved from plans review to inspector and we have been uh, building her in this role um, since she came on board with us a year ago. Um, so we're excited to see her uh, moving into that position as well. And uh, with that movement, the, we are replacing the plans review position and that has uh, currently been posted and uh, uh, we hope to have that filled as soon as possible. Um, other than that, that, that's all I really had to add to the report. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Scott. Uh, uh, considering Scott's report, any additional questions that uh, might have arose? Uh, clerk, Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Burton. We just need a mover and a seconder before you take the vote. 
Okay. Uh, can I have a mover and seconder for this motion? Councillor Walker, Councillor Broadbrick. If there's no questions, I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor? Perfect. Motion carried. Thank you. Next item is human resources. Be resolved, <clears throat> be resolved that the Council of the Township of Clearview hereby receive report HR-003-2021-2021 Administration Office Christmas Closure for information. Is there a uh, have a mover and seconder for that? That would be Broadwick and Lamers. And uh, I, I believe our Director of uh, Human Resources is with us. Is there any questions of her? Uh, Tammy's not here. Um, this, uh, this report apparently is a normal practice to present to council at this time, leading into the uh, potential Christmas holidays. Are there any questions from council? No? All in, gonna call for the vote. We have a mover and we have a seconder, I believe. And uh, uh, all, all, all in favor? Motion carried. We go on to page five of our uh, of our meeting. This is public works. This is PW-039-2021 Collingwood Street Bridge, 6th, 7th side row, 5th concession upgrades. RJ Burnside estimate engineering cost item added to the agenda November 8th, 2021 at 10 a.m. Before I go on uh, reading the recommendation, I want to thank all the members of the public who attend the uh, 23 letters and, and, and comments that they sent in. And um, I assure you the intention was not to make a decision on closing the bridge tonight. That was not the intent. The intent was to uh, gather information on what our options were. Uh, although I can easily understand how maybe it might've been misinterpreted. Um, I'm gonna read the report, ask for a mover and seconder. And, and then, um, and I see Councillor Patterson wants to speak then, and uh, we'll take it from there. Be resolved that the Council of the Township of Clearview hereby receive report PW-039-2021 regarding the technical memorandum regarding the Collingwood Street Bridge closure implication preparation by RJ Burnside and Associates Limited. Direct staff to comments engineering works using option, it was one, one or two which is part of the report, and that staff report back to council with the engineering design, including cost estimates prior to commencing and, and, and any works. I'm gonna ask for a mover and seconder first, and then uh, Councillor Patterson wants to speak. So I will take Councillor McKechnie and Councillor Broderick as mover and seconder, and then Councillor Patterson, you have the floor. Well, I, I wanted to move, uh, I didn't want to, uh to preempt the uh, discussion. So I was, I put my flag up to move. So go ahead with the, if you're, when you're calling, I'd like to comment when you're calling for suggestions. Okay, uh, is there any comments from council members? Almost any comments from council members. Dan, did you want to uh, just give us, give us a, a brief idea of what uh, you were trying to achieve uh, through this report and uh, to uh, sort of, uh, reassure our residents that uh, we are not making a decision to head on closing the bridge. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Burton. Uh, yeah, certainly not the intent uh, to have council make a decision uh, on the closure of the bridge. Uh, if you recall back at the budget deliberation discussions for 2021, um, there, there was discussion and direction given by council to, to have staff come back with, uh, I guess, two options. Uh, one is to uh, close the bridge and make a diversion around from 6-7 side road in concession five, or to um, reconstruct the bridge. So this is a report uh, come back to, to council when we have the information um, with, with the engineering costs to do the work or an estimated engineering cost to do the work uh, in both options. So uh, it was never the intention to uh, have council make the decision today. It was just provide direction to staff in the direction that council um, would choose on um, closing the bridge, doing the engineering works, 
to allow for council to make a decision uh, one way or the other on to uh, reconstruct the bridge and or um, do upgrades to six, seven side road and concession five to allow for the um, potential closure of the bridge and the diversion around uh, through that way. And, and if I am correct that it was going to be any, any work that would be, <clears throat> whatever the decision is in the future, it's still not happening to 2024, is that correct? Was the direction of council was to, is that correct? Yeah, so, so thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. And um, that decision to push the cons actual construction out was, was made in consultation with our uh, OSIM report. So our, every other year, uh, RJ Burnside will do an inspection on our bridges, half one year, half another. And uh, based on the last one that was done, uh, in 2019, another one was done in 2021, and uh, we um, it still is uh, uh, I'll say pushed out to 2020 2024. Um, there are other bridges that have moved up the uh, up the list that uh, Burnside has indicated that uh, they would be uh, in in need of more than the Collingwood Street Bridge. And that is why the decision was made back at the 2021 budget to push that out to 2024. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Patterson, you had your card up. Yes, thank you. I, I uh, having, having had some discussion with uh, uh, Deputy Director, uh, uh, I uh, feel that uh, in order to meet the intent of what the staff is asking for, um, that I would like to propose a uh, referral motion. Uh, the motion would be referring um, his report uh, to him, uh, working with uh, R.J. Burnside, uh, to, to essentially fill in the gaps uh, in the engineering costs um, that were indicated in both of the technical mem memorandums from uh, R.J. Burnside. Both of them require extensive geotechnical investigation for subsoil, sub uh, roadbed, uh, uh, organic soil conditions. Um, uh, there's some concerns about uh, just how much um, uh, drainage, for example, would be required if we took the diversion route on um, and how much work would have to be done, including possible uh, land acquisitions on 6-7 if we were to close the bridge. So my, my, my referral motion, um, and, and we can read it out in detail, but essentially what it says is reflecting what's in the uh, Burnside reports, the two of them, attachment one and attachment two, that we direct staff um, to go back and, and get uh, engineering costs um, workups for both um, the closure of the bridge and the diversion and for the uh, construction of a new bridge. And uh, since uh, RJ Burnside's did recommend uh, 2B, uh, option 2B in their report um, for a 35 meter span, I would say um, uh, we would uh, have the full cost work up for that. And um, since there was no uh, clear um, direction in terms of uh, what form of uh, um, remediation of the diversion road was there, I would say to, to make sure that we've encapsulated all the possible costs that we, we have a full engineering workup for the full depth um, uh, uh, construction of uh, five, six, uh, six, seven rather, and concession five, recognizing that six, seven probably needs more of that type of work than concession five. So that's what's in the body of my deferral motion. I have prepared one. I've sent a copy to the, the chair, deputy mayor and to uh, to the clerk, uh, Sasha has it. I think Dan, you've seen a copy of it. And uh, so I would be looking for a seconder uh, so that we can get that uh, deferral motion, referral motion on, on the floor. Madam, Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Burton, for you to council. Um, would you like me to read Councillor Patterson's referral before we get a seconder? I was just gonna ask you to do that, yes, so. If you would read the motion that uh, Councillor Patterson is moving, and then I'll ask for a second. B 
Be it resolved that Council refer staff report PW-039-2021 regarding the technical memorandum regarding the Collingwood Street Bridge to the Deputy Director of Public Works for further determination of the comparative engineering design and construction cost estimates for both option one, which is full depth reconstruction of side road six, seven and concession five as referred to in RJ Burnside technical memorandum, Collingwood Street Bridge closure implications to April, 2021 attachment number one and option two B a 34 meter span bridge replacement as referred to in RJ Burnside technical memorandum reconstruction options dated September 17th, 2019, attachment number two, and that staff report back to council with the engineering design, including 2021 cost estimates for council deliberations at a special council meeting in early 2022, which would include the opportunity for public consultation. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Yes, Councillor McKechnie, you are seconding the motion. Okay, so, since it's a referral, there is no further discussion required. Uh, I, am I correct, uh, Madam Clerk? Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Burton. Through you to the rest of council, there can be discussion regarding aspects of the referral, if um, a council member would like to amend anything about the referral. But after that, once it's been approved, then there's no further discussion on, on the main motion. Are there, are there any questions about the referral? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, going once, going twice, I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor? Motion carried. Those opposed? Thank you. Motion carried. Thank you, Council. Okay. Next item on our list is uh, PW-040-2021 endorsement of amendments to source protection plan. This is a, this is a little lengthy, I gotta read it. Be it resolved that Council of the Township of Clearview hereby receive the correspondence dated October 26, 2021 from Ryerson, from Ryan Post, Nottawasaga Valley Conservation Authority and Bill Thompson, Lake Simcoe Region Conservation Authority are we amendments to the South Georgian Bay Lake Simcoe Protection Plan notification of consultation pursuant to section 34, subsection two and 34, subsection three of the Clean Water Act 2006, the Ontario Regulation 287 07, request for council resolution. And council endorsed the proposed amendments to the Clearview chapter of the Nottawasaga Valley Assessment Report as well as the South Georgian Bay Lake Simcoe Source Protection Plan outlined in the amendments to South Georgian Bay Lake Simcoe Source Protection Plan, notification of consultation pursuant to section 34, subsection two and 34, subsection three of the Clean Water Act 2006 and Ontario Regulation 28 07 for the correspondence dated October 26, 21 and that the NVCA be advised of council's decision on the director of public works signature. Can I, can I have a mover uh, and a seconder for that motion? And then I will call on our director, uh, Mr. Ron, to, uh, to uh, maybe make some comments. <clears throat> Councillor Lamers and Councillor Broderick. Uh, hello, Director Ron, how are you tonight? I'm doing well, Your Worship. How are you tonight? I'm great. Would you like to make some comments, please? Sure. So um, I want to thank um, Mr. Post for drafting that council resolution for us so that we're in accordance with the Clean Water Act requirements. Um, basically, we're just satisfying the requirements to proceed, include these wells as um, part of the source water protection plan for our area. Uh, concurrently, we're also following up with other studies required under different acts of legislation. Uh, adding a well supply is an extremely complex procedure. We relayed this to the developers in Cremor on numerous occasions, uh, three to four year process. There's been no start there. Uh, we're down to probably two years and we should have water coming from this site. If council has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I, I do want to thank uh, 
So Ryan Post and Bill Thompson, um, they've been doing the, the background work on this. And, and Stephanie Shell actually drafted this report uh, a couple of weeks ago um, for us. So happy to answer questions. Thank you. Any questions from council? Geez, you guys are being, uh, Councillor Patterson. Um, you're muted. I didn't hear what you said, Councillor Patterson. I just see your hand going up. I don't hear what, so I can't tell if you're asking a question or not. Just thanking uh, Mike for his report. Oh, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Okay, I'm gonna call for the motion, all in favor. Motion carried. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Ron. Next item on our list, page six. FD-007-2021 Stainer Emergency Hub Snow and Ice Removal Contract Extension. Recommendation, be resolved that the Council of the Township of Clearview hereby receive report FD-007-2021 Stainer Emergency Hub Snow and Ice Removal Contract Extension and approve a contract extension with Equifix for an additional five years <clears throat> 2021 to 2026 with an annual fee increase of 2% per year for snow and ice removal at the Stainer Emergency Hub located at 6993 Highway 26. And I have a mover and a seconder, please. I'll go with Councillor Janine and Councillor Lamers. Thank you. Is there any questions or comments? Councillor McKechnie. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, so I'm just wondering, since we share that uh, the space in that hub with the uh, the county regarding the uh, the paramedic uh, equipment and, and such, uh, do they pay us anything to help out with the uh, maintenance or the uh, the snow removal there at all? Uh, for your work trip to Councillor McKechnie. Um, so, um, yeah, how how the billing of that hub works is the township is responsible for sixty six percent of costs and the. Uh, county is responsible for the remaining percentage of the cost. So uh, it is just about everything at that facility is split that way. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Chief Payment. Um, any other questions? All for the motion, all in favor? Motion carried. Item 13, <clears throat> notice of motion, <clears throat> new business. Councillor Deneen, denotion to Clearview Standard Food Bank. <clears throat> Where is the provincial COVID-19 cases have yet to be substantially subside and many people are still being affected financially due to the pandemic and where is the Canada Emergency Response Benefit is scheduled to end October 23rd, 2021 and where is the need for support for food security is not diminished during this pandemic time and Whereas it has been over six months since the township's last donation to the Clearview Stain or Food Bank, therefore, be resolved that the Council of the Township of Clearview hereby directs staff to provide a donation to the Clearview Stain or Food Bank in the amount of $10,000 on behalf of the corporation, with the donation being funded through the 2021 Community Assistance Grant and COVID 19 Community Assistance Fund. And so I assume Councillor Deneen is moving that. And can we have a second, please? Uh, Councillor Broderick, is our seconder. Any questions or comments? Councillor Lamers. <coughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Does the Community Assistance Fund still have lots of funds available in there? Uh, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Burton. Actually, um, Deputy Clerk Brenda Falls is um, on this meeting tonight, and I think she can give an update to Council on the remaining funds. Madam Deputy Clerk, how are you tonight? Thank you very well. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Burton. Uh, yes, there, there are enough funds uh, in both. Uh, so there is approximately $8,650 left in the relief fund and approximately 8,500 left in the community assistance grant. So we could technically uh, use all of the funds from the COVID relief and then the remaining funds out of the community assistance grants to cover the $10,000. Okay. 
Perfect. Okay, were there any other questions? Going once, going twice. Going to call for the votes. All in favor? Motion carried. The next one is, is Councillor McKechnie's. No parking signs on concession 10 at County Road 124 intersection. Whereas the south end of concession 10 at the intersection with County Road 24 is a popular parking area for outdoor enthusiasts. And whereas local farmers with wide farm vehicles find it difficult to navigate through the, through the cars when they are parked on both sides of the road. Therefore, be resolved, the Council of the Township of Clearview hereby direct staff to explore ways to encourage drivers to park on one side of concession 10 in the area immediately north of County Road 124 or in the alternative to create more parking space to keep cars off the paved services and to bring a report to council prior to the summer of 2022. Uh, I assume Councillor McKechnie is moving that and do we have a seconder? Councillor Lamers, comments and questions? Uh, Councillor Walker. Thank you, Your Worship. Just a quick question. Um, do we have to so, do we have to supply any parking at all? I mean, if you're going to put it on one side of the road, I, th I still think that's going to be an issue um, with the farm equipment, with the trucks turning. So I think that uh, we put we don't do any parking at all. That's not. Um, I don't think it's our responsibility to ensure parking for the Niagara Scarborough for the Bruce Trail uh, on Long R roads. I think that's a bad corner with that corner in the hill, sight lines. So I think we should have no parking on both sides of the road. We should not allow parking period on that and come up with some other alternative uh, location for parking in conjunction and partnership with the um, other parties involved. Thank you. Councillor McKechnie, would you like to comment on that? Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I see where uh, Robert's uh, coming from there. Um, you know, fine. Uh, if, if we can allow or we can uh, prohibit parking, uh, if that's the way the council wants to go, uh, I, I think what we want to do is uh, create enough room for the uh, farm traffic to, get, to be able to get through with their wide combines and such. Uh, you know, I don't, I, I hear what you're saying, uh, Robert, but I, I don't think that uh, the, uh, I, I think that might cause more problems, but if that's the way council wants to go, I, I don't have a problem with it. Maybe Dan can, uh, can speak to that. Uh, okay, uh, so, 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 so Madam Clerk, um, I wanted to hear from Dan first, and, and then uh, I was going to ask Councillor Walker, if in fact he's making an amendment. Is that what you were going to suggest? Actually, thank you, Deputy Mayor Burton. Because um, this is to bring a report back to, to council, we can right. definitely include that as an option. I have made notes as an option to council when the report is brought back and explore other options regarding parking in that area. So I have made a note, but I'll, I'll let the Deputy Director of Public Works speak as well. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Perot. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Burton. Um, I just wanted to give council a, a bit of an update. Uh, just recently, I think it was, uh, uh, might have been, been last week, the week before, uh, the Bruce, uh, Conservancy, Bruce Trail Conservancy uh, Group have been making their rounds through the municipalities, uh, realizing that uh, parking has, been, has become a, a bit of an issue for not only our municipality, but others in the in the uh, vicinity of the Bruce Trail. Uh, they are actively uh, seeking um, options to create parking uh, either on their lands, uh, potentially working with the uh, closed provincial park and expanding parking in those areas too. So that, that's just a bit of information uh, that just is very new, um, but we can also include that in a report back to council as well, uh, follow up with them as on that part of, also. Uh, Madam Clark. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Burton. Um, but I should say if council wants to formalize it in the resolution, it could be a friendly amendment if Councillor McKechnie and Councillor Lamers would allow it just to have it as an option just written in the, the last part of the recommendation. Councillor Walker, are you making a friendly amendment? Yes, yeah, sure. I would like to put in a friendly amendment with regards to allowing no parking at all. 
Uh, do you accept that friendly amendment, Councillor McKechnie? Yes. Councillor Lamers, do you accept that? Yes. Okay, are there any questions or comments? Councillor Patterson. Yes, my, my question was going to be what, uh, what where, where was the Bruce Trail? Um, so I'm glad to hear the update. I'm wondering if we should add one other friendly amendment to it and that that would be done, the work that we're asking the staff to do to be done in cooperation with uh, the BTC, the, the, the Bruce Trail Commission. So are you making another amendment? Are, are you in fact I'm suggesting that we make reference to the uh, Bruce Trail Commission so that you know, we bring them in on any decisions we make uh, with, with, that, with that regard. No. That is an amendment you're making to to converse with the with the Bruce Trail Authority. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, I would have thought it was a friendly amendment, but yes. Yeah, well, I would consider it a friendly amendment too. So back to Councillor McEcking and Councillor Lamers, do you accept that friendly amendment? I would yeah. accept. I, I would accept it, uh, Deputy Mayor. But I'd also like to speak just to clarify. Something. Okay. But I will. Go ahead, Councillor McEcking. I will accept that friendly amendment, uh, you know, and sure, let's uh, talk to the Bruce Trail. But one thing to remember, too, that a lot of the cars that are parking there are not using the Bruce Trail. There's a, a rock face there that they, uh, north, or sorry, west of Concession 10. So they're actually walking away from the Bruce Trail. So it's not the Bruce Trail. It's, uh, and, and they're heading to that uh, rock face to do some uh, climbing there. So uh you know even uh, even though the bruce trail is just to the east of it and maybe some of the people are parking there to, to access the bruce trail a lot of them i believe are parking there to actually walk to the west to access this uh, rock face that they like to climb but anyway but i'll accept the friendly amendment i i, I don't think it uh, it hurts to uh, uh talk to the bruce trail about this as well so yeah. thank you so we've had we have two friendly amendments you've noted them madam clerk Okay, and uh, so I'm going to call for the vote uh, on the motion as amended. Do we need to? Yes, Councillor Patterson. I'm, I'm voting. Oh, you're voting. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to call for the vote. Uh, all in favor? Motion carried. Thank you. Number 14, page seven. Bylaw to confirm proceeding of council meeting. Recommendations be resolved that bylaw 21-109 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the November 8, 2021 council meeting be presented and read a first, the second and third time and finally pass the eighth day of November, 2021. Can I have a mover please? Councillor Deneen, Councillor Broderick, uh, all in favor. Motion carried. Motion to adjourn, be it resolved that council meeting be adjourned at 7.13 is my time. 7.14, sorry, just click 7.14 p.m. Uh, moved by Councillor Lamer, seconded by Councillor McKechnie, all in favor. Perfect, before anybody goes away, I, I would just like everybody to know that I'm sitting here at Sasha's desk, who has never sat at this desk. And I found that counselor, uh, that, that the, past, the past clerk left you a little present, this little bobby head uh, pen for you. So I will leave this here. And uh, I think that's something she left for you on purpose. So thank you. Good night all.